that, Frame Raider. A prototype for Rayman 4, Rayman Raving Rabbids, was leaked online in late 2022. It was essentially a long-lost 3D platforming sequel to Rayman 3. Due to a variety of things, mostly time crunch, the game was completely reworked using some of its existing gameplay mechanics. And that became the 2006 Raving Rabbids party game that we know of today. Almost 20 years later, while Rayman has had some 2D adventures, he's still yet to make a proper return to 3D platforming. Now, my previous thoughts on the Rayman 4 prototype was that it's a neat showcase, but in this state it's nowhere remotely close to being finished. I figured the community might work on some enhancement mods and maybe some custom maps, but to continue its development? I had my doubts. And yet, Rayman Raving Rabbids Reburrowed, a project dedicated to converting the prototype into a fully playable Rayman 4. I was recently given the opportunity to talk to the Reburrowed team, who gave me some insights on what we can expect from the game. So, one day Michel Ancel came up with a sketch. He then pitched the following idea. What if the cutest thing you've ever seen turned evil? Ah! This would become the Rabbids. They've been watching and planning since the very beginning, taking notes of Rayman's adventures so they can defeat him when they strike. The Rabbids have now damaged the heart of the world, scattering lums and electoons everywhere. Lee the Fairy will do her best to repair it, but she needs your help. By collecting electoons and returning them to Lee, she'll give you various costumes, but more about those later. Remember how Andre from Rayman 3 and his girlfriend Monique were intended to be in the game? Well, all that stuff will also be in Reburrowed. Basically, anything and everything officially confirmed in the past will be involved. And that's all I know about that, but I should mention how many custom assets are being made to further expand the prototype. It all begins in the Windbound Valley, which you've seen in the 2006 trailer. This world's more of a movement and controls tutorial. Shortly after, you're captured by Sergway. Sergway? Is there a canon way of pronouncing this? Anyways, he takes you to the Colosseum, where you then learn about the game's combat. Rayman manages to escape, landing him in the Sprouting Meadows. And here's where the game starts to really open up. This world, the Sprouting Meadows, was the most completed stage in the prototype. So as such, it's being used as a template for the gameplay loop. Rayman will have a variety of objectives to complete, but it's up to you which one you want to tackle first. On the way, you'll encounter many unique set pieces with engaging platforming challenges. I'm being told that it's a bit like Sonic Frontier's open zones, and that there's a certain order to it all that'll make sense once you play it for yourself. There are many rabid bases to explore, each of which will have their own tech style depending on the world. Most worlds have an animal mount with unique abilities. Now I won't reveal all of them, but this world has a spider. They've improved its look since the prototype, making it more authentic to the Rayman art style. Textures overall, by the way, are being remastered. Here are a few before and after pictures. Also, to further enhance the atmosphere, most worlds will now have a full day to night cycle. Over time, you'll find that the world has been changing around you as the rabbits progress in their conquest. Here's an example of that, along with a preview of the soundtrack. In order to reach the final area in each world, you'll need to collect a certain amount of baby glow boxes, which have a new model by the way, because those final game ones were… odd. You can find these glow box babies in the open world, and some are also collected in minigames. Now yes, minigames were always planned for Rayman Raving Rabbids, but unlike the final, they were once more involved with the base game. 
I'm told that for Reburrowed's minigames, you'll be controlling Rayman directly. So, after you've completed the Sprouting Meadows, you'll next arrive in the Sparkling Atolls, which you might recognize as the beach world used for several minigames in the final release. Speaking of, maps from the final game are also being patched and rebuilt. One example being that Canyon Skydiving map, which seems to be based on the Far West world that was once intended for the platforming prototype. They've decided to put this world after the Sparkling Atolls. Within it, you'll also find the Mine FPS level from the final game, which will be used as another base for the Rabbids. Yeah, it's all coming together now, isn't it? Then Rayman will end up in the Land of the Livid Dead. It's basically the graveyard world from the final game. Here you'll encounter zombie rabbits. Yeah, it wouldn't be a Rayman game without some kind of nightmare fuel. Oh, do you remember that sky world from the prototype? The one with ancient towers, temples, and floating islands? Well, that one's name is the Celestial Islands, which is the following world. Then you enter the Enchanted Savannah, a jungle world with ruins and ancient structures. You'll be able to charge around on a buffalo here, which is the most undocumented animal mount known to the public. It's real. The Frozen Valley is next, which is a snowy terrain surrounded by rocks and frozen underwater caverns. You'll ride an anglerfish here to explore the depths below. The final world is called War of the Worlds, which takes place in the game's first location, Windbound Valley. At this point, it's been completely industrialized by the rabbits. It's up to Rayman to finally stop them and save the Glade of Dreams. Alright, let's talk about characters. A frequently asked question regards whether the game will be fully voice acted, or use Rayman 2 styled gibberish speech. The answer is... gibberish. Interviews had previously confirmed this to be the case, so they're sticking with it. For models, they've turned to the Xbox 360's quote-unquote remaster for the highest quality assets. This includes the final Rabid model, which were likely to be the final design anyways had the game continued development. Case in point, an earlier model of this Rabid was found in the prototype. And those scientific fact teasers? They were being featured around the same time. Many have admitted a fondness for the prototype Rabbids, and the team acknowledged this. So they'll be coming back in a zombified form during the Land of the Livid Dead chapter. Alternatively, you can use these old Rabbid models for the main game in Proto Mode, which aims to make the game's aesthetics closer to its infamous pre-release state. You know, just for fun. Remember those big grey rabbits from the final game? They're here now, and wah, just as much as ever. Yeah. Most enemies in the game have two classes, Standard and Commander. These rabbits are the Commander type. They're technically normal rabbits though, they've just been enlarged by the power of Electoons. Once you defeat them, they'll return to their normal state, and the Electoon becomes yours. Alright, who else have we got? Inspector rabbits, Knight rabbits, Mole rabbits, even the Kamikaze rabbits. Remember these? They actually existed in the prototype, but were unfinished at the time. You know Professor Baranko? No, not that guy. This guy. He doesn't count as a class, but rather a single character in the game. We'll surely know more about him later. But yeah, this rabbit from Rayman Raving Rabbids 2? The community seems to have accepted him as Professor Baranko, but there doesn't seem to be any existing proof of it. If anyone has a theory as to how this happened, let me know in the comments. Here's Jabbit the Emperor Rabbid. He's been modeled and looks great. They've created concept animations for his introduction as well, which I can't show off, but just letting you know that it's coming along pretty well. In terms of atmosphere, the original game was meant to have wildlife inhabiting its environments. Many creatures of this world can be interacted with by either riding or grappling. One example would be that cow tossing minigame from the final, which was originally a separate game mechanic. So, we kind of know the name of that elephant demon creature now. It's Nurgle. Or at least that's the title of its file. Considering Nurgle is the name of a Warhammer 40k enemy, it could have been a placeholder, but who knows. Let's talk about gameplay. Reburrowed will release with three difficulties. Normal, Hard, and Raving. I'll use a live system, but don't worry about running short, because you can always collect more in-game. In regards to the player's HP, Rayman loses one piece of clothing at a time. Once Rayman becomes naked, he's one hit away from a lost life. What do the Lums do in this game? Well, as is tradition to change the tradition of Lums, in this game they're more like a resource. 
Rayman has a boost meter, which you can sort of see in action during the final game's gift minigame. The Reburrowed team decided to make it so that you'll collect lums to refill this boost meter. Red lums, on the other hand, are still related to HP. In the original prototype, you just hold a teensy to run instead of collecting lums. The difference now is that the boost meter becomes indefinite when holding a teensy. Speaking of the boost meter, that's using graphical inspiration from the final game. In fact, many of these HUD assets and sounds are being brought over. Just makes sense to do so, right? And fits well, just as it should. The grapple mechanics have been improved. Oh yeah, grappling is a huge gameplay aspect of this one. As such, they'll be making great use of it in Reburrowed. Combat has also been refined. One thing that existed in the leak, which I didn't know about at the time, is that rabbits are meant to be killed off with a finishing move. They've made it a lot flashier for Reburrowed. <laughs> So when you do this like this, it would become a series of rapid punches like Kung Fu. Yeah! Like that! And Rayman has a proper plunger gun now, giving full justice to all that promo art. How about those costumes? These give Rayman stat changes, so whatever ability you need is available if you've collected the costume. You may need to swap outfits on the fly sometimes. One costume might remove Rayman's ability to use his helicopter hair, while another costume might have Rayman do less damage. Smart attire only, fellas. I was told about one of the costume's abilities, the Elvis costume, which allows you to use your grapple hook to stun or electrocute rabbits. Some outfits that weren't designed for the prototype, like the DJ costume in the final game, will also be integrated in Reburrowed. That dancing minigame has been greatly improved since the leak. It all works as it should now, and after completion, the dancing rabbits will join your side and help out by killing other rabbits. It's so wrong, but so right. And that's what I've gathered after having a short discussion with the Reburrowed team. There's currently no release date, and it'll only be available for Windows PCs. As an insignificant but existing part of their team, I've seen more from the project that isn't yet public, and I can tell you firsthand that this game is looking really cool. I think you'll all greatly enjoy it once it's finished. Reburrowed's team has been dedicated to the project almost since the leak came out with no signs of stopping. They promise, to the best of their ability, that this will be an accurate vision of what Rayman Raving Rabbids could have been had Ubisoft stuck with the initial plan. For more Reburrowed, check out their Discord server, link in the description, and various social media accounts. There's a lot of fun teasers over there, including their own Bunny Scientific Facts video. Wow, I remember waiting to see more of these as they premiered back in 2006, and having another show up in 2023? What a flashback, man. Oh, and they also have a remake of the But They Can Dance theme, created by their own Avizura. While I'm at it, I should shout out Hogsy for their work on the Jade Engine, and also credit Ad Solution for making a tool to convert Blender character rigs to Jade. And you can't forget about the project directors Made a Goof and Shoen. They're highly committed to the project, and were the ones to help me out with this video. Lastly, a special thanks goes out to everyone else who's contributed to Reburrowed. If you're interested in helping the development of Reburrowed, you can check out their dev sign-up link in the description. They're still looking for new talent on the project. After all, it's a huge undertaking. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you're looking forward to Reburrowed, and I'll see you in the next one.